And with that, I now own every single DLC character and fighters. Man, they sure all have been a lot of fun. I wonder if base Goku's actually competitively viable. No, dude, please don't tell me I bought the worst DLC character. Oh, thank goodness, dude. That was so scary. Well, I guess since he's not the worst character out there, there's really no harm in me playing him and at least making a video about uh, where he's good and where he's bad. Wait, was, was that supposed to be the intro? Let's start by going over a few areas in which base Goku really struggles. And there are really only a few big ones that I feel the need to mention. For starters, base Goku suffers the same fate as most other Goku characters in the game in the sense that he doesn't understand that a 2L should probably hit low. As far as gameplay is concerned, this just means that base Goku has a little bit of a harder time opening people up when they're just blocking. Of course, he does have this command throw available to him, but you can't really combo off of most of the versions. And even for the one you can, well, we'll just get to that a little later. Because right now we have to talk about my biggest issue with base Goku, and that's the fact that his level 3 works completely differently from any other in the cast. Throughout the history of fighters, some level 3s have been unquestionably great, some have been very good, some have been a little harder to land, but still, all things level 3 share in common is that they always give you that hard knockdown on your opponent. So even if you don't get the kill, you still get a chance to hit him with that last mix-up to seal the game. Base Goku throws a gigantic spirit bomb from the other side of the screen. Now granted, it does a lot of damage and if you set it up correctly, it could be a game ender, but if you're the last character alive or just don't want to switch out into another character at the moment, if you get a knockdown on an opponent with base Goku, you can just kiss that hard knockdown goodbye. But you know what, maybe you're okay with this when building your team. You'll take a little bit of extra damage with your level 3, even if it means that in some situations you won't be able to get the hard knockdown. All you really need is for this character to have easy access to sliding knockdowns just like all his other Goku counterparts. Eh, he don't got that either. You see, where Super Saiyan Goku can land a beam, vanish behind them, and then do a combo into a sliding knockdown for better Oki, base Goku is kind of just stuck with doing that first part and then, uh, and then just ending the combo. This is why I said we talk about that command grab later, because even if you do hit it, the combo you will get off of it will give you around 3,000 damage and will end with your opponent just going back into neutral. The EX grab is a little bit better as you don't have to vanish for a combo, you can just do the auto combo and follow it up, but you will still end the combo with a soft knockdown. So really all of base Goku's big flaws can be summed up in general by saying, has a hard time getting to the pressure state, and even when he's there, it's really not too scary to just sit there and block. And that's pretty much all the cons I have for base Goku, now we can go ahead and go into the real game changing stuff. Number 1, did you know that base Goku's 2M is a little longer than Super Saiyan Goku's? Use this at the start of a round to gain a true advantage over your- I dropped the combo. No, but seriously. I joke around because base Goku really doesn't do anything that much better than anybody else in the cast other than two things. One, his amazing damage with his spirit bomb which you have to set up, either through other supers or by using the move lend me your energy to get the three stacks and then if you land the hand spirit bomb you can go directly into the super spirit bomb. Both of these options though I require Goku to have assists that can cover for him or having other characters alive that can link into his super spirit bomb. This obviously isn't that big of a deal you can just run base Goku on point but the ironic thing is that you're actually missing out on a pretty good assist and also his more powerful versions of the Kaioken attack, which is his level 1 super. Basically the gimmick behind the Kaioken attack is as your teammates die, Goku will progressively level it up to make it stronger and stronger, maxing out at the Kaioken times 20 which requires him to be all alone. For a level 1 super at that stage it does an incredible amount of damage and is also very versatile, as each button you hit makes Goku perform a different option, meaning that if you're very well versed in the system, you can create these beautiful looking combos, all while making sure you get the most optimal damage and then finishing it with the ender for whatever state of Kaioken you're in. Most of the time though you'll be calling upon any previous Bardock slash Vegito experience and just mashing the square button over and over as Goku will perform an automatic Kaioken combo which you can then finish with the ender. The hardest part is that if you are actually a Bardock or Vegito player you will have to learn how to count to 3, 5, and 7 respectively just so you can know how to squeeze the most damage out but this step isn't too necessary as you can just go right into the ender if you're ever getting scared when you get up to those higher numbers like 3 or 5. And those were pretty much all my pros for base Goku. I you know, saying it back, that really didn't turn out to be a pro section, but base Goku is just a lot of fun, okay? I really enjoy playing this character. Uh, he's just not the best. But where does he go on a team? Well, as we discussed, it's kind of awkward with base Goku. You can either run him up on point or put him in the back for his assist, but I think ideally you want him up in point, you can charge up that level 3 spirit bomb and then switch him out, uh, and then he'll do the rest of the work after his teammates are... 
I just realized that Arxis did an amazing job with this character. If you want to start playing base Goku but have no idea what teams you should run, I have a few suggestions for you. You could run team all three but still me, team two halves make a whole, or team Goku's progression. Try not to tag out or use assist for the proper anime experience. And with that we've come to the end all question of should you play base Goku? Probably not, if you're just trying to win, there are a lot of other better Goku options out there, namely all of the other Goku options out there, but feel free to play base Goku if you're just looking for some fun, or if the Kaioken looks really cool to you. Again, this is a three person tag fighter, you can play just about anybody and get away with it, as long as your other two characters are good and your defense isn't poor. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video, I have a few on your screen right now that involve me playing this game and other fighting games, and even a whole series of videos just like this one if you want to go check out that playlist. It should be up there as well. Down in the comments, let me know your thoughts on base Goku as well as how he stacks up to all the other Goku competition in this game. While you're down there, if you like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on any future videos. It also helps support the channel immensely. I'm Dr. Doya, I'll see you in the next video.